Yo, welcome to the Vibe Provider Podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin Frill, and we got a special guest, my friend Chantel. Say what's up. Hi, everybody. Um, So, meet Chantel Erickson. She is, she's actually a friend I've made through work, and she's currently living in Denver. And this is my friend who... I take her book recommendations very seriously. <laughs> if you've ever recommended me a book, I probably have checked it through Chantel, to be honest. Yeah, so Chantel, she does um, marketing. She's graduated and she's currently living in Denver, planning on going to grad school. And this girl reads. And I'm talking, she's a serious reader. Um, is there anything you need to add to my little intro for you? <laughs> no, I think you covered a lot of the basics. Cool. Um, you're probably run- wondering, well, I know you're not, but I'll tell you anyways, but Chantel was, when we worked together, she was so organized, always had a plan, um, and I was the, the chit-chatter, the yapper. I, <laughs> she was the one who trained me, um got me fully into working at Lehigh Mills or KEB Enterprises, whichever. Um, What was like your first impression when I started working with you? Well, I'd met you before you actually came and worked for us when we did a tour of the mill. Yes. And you were sunshine. Like that was just like my impression of you. So I was really excited when you came and started working for us just because you you bring a vibe, which is obviously why you have your podcast named that, but it, it was just fun. You just always make everybody happy. And so it That's was really, needed. Yeah, That was really nice. I was very excited. It was very fun that we had a lot of time together at work that we were able to just talk. Um, and we talked about like life. Honestly, it was, it was so fun. We shared this huge mega desk and we would just work and chat and then At one point, oh, I think I had mentioned, like, I had started reading again. And you're like, oh, I love reading. Like, what are you reading? And I was so embarrassed to tell you because I was reading young adult books at the, well, I still do. Um, And you're like, what are you reading? And I was like, dude, Chantel's about to judge me so hard. (laughs) Um, I don't know, because if you know Chantel, she just has this, like, mature personality. She's just, like put together and I was about to tell her I was like I'm reading this Sarah Dessen book about two high schoolers in love (laughs) and I told her and she was like I love Sarah Dessen and I was like oh (laughs) perfect and then she was like if you like this book you're gonna love this book and she recommended like a Cassie West book which I did indeed love and then from there on out we ended up talking a lot about books And I will say 2022 was the year I had read the most books ever. And that was the year that like we started talking about books. And I think I read majority of my books from like half the year to the end of the year. And I still can't beat it. Like last year I didn't read as many books. Anyway, so Chantel got me into book talk, reading, all the things. Everyone needs a book bestie. And I think that's what helped you read as many books as you did is because as soon as you can read a book and then talk to someone about how great they are yeah that just makes it worth it more than just reading a book and being done yeah I will say it's definitely a one-sided thing so I do kind of feel bad because you don't get anything from me out of this (laughs) book talk friendship besides like anything outside of books of course but I really, I do feel really lucky that I have a friend who will text me out of the blue and be like, hey, read a book and I know you'll love it. Or, you know, like, hey, what are you reading recently? And I tell her, she's like, oh, I loved that book. You should, I'm reading this. I think you'll like it. Like, she's always recommending things. Dude, I'm just really lucky to have a a book talk friend. Well, friend that is into book talk. (laughs) I did a whole lot of talking. Chantel hasn't even had a chance. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Now we're going to go into our little life update portion. And so Chantel, just tell us anything going on in the next week or two or something you're looking forward to in the future. So like Caitlin said, I'm 
considering where I'm going to go for grad school right now. And so I actually have a Europe trip planned in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's like six months away, but still. Um, so we're going to, my brother and I are going to go check out some different schools in Europe, some of the countries. And I am very excited because it's also an opportunity to go and visit some like some old bookstores. Yes. So that's going to be cool. And you like history as well. Yeah. Since I, I think it's on your mind, when you have like a Europe trip and when you are visiting as many countries that you're going to visit, I think it takes six months to plan. Yes. So just some, some of the places I know of is Germany, mm -hmm. La, uh, England, UK, mm -hmm. um, Paris, France. Mm -hmm. I'm saying like Paris and France because it's like you could go to Paris and I'm sure she's going to go wander around France too. Um, and then Spain. Spain. In Portugal. Correct. Okay. So it's going to be an epic trip. I'm looking forward to it because I just can't wait to see all the things her and her brother are going to do. They're both very adventurous. Um, You're kind of on something you've been looking forward to is you're on a trip right now. Yes. That's why we're filming a little episode before she starts the second part of her trip with another friend. But um, yeah, and you've just been like having the best time with your fam because she's from Denver and her family lives there, so she's been able to spend so much good quality time with her family members, which I love hearing about. Her, she has really great siblings and great parents, but... So it's been fun to hear. She said her... I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but her sister got a boyfriend! I don't have younger siblings, so it's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anything else? You're rock climbing a lot. I am. I don't and know. I, like, mm -hmm. read and rock climb and go to work, and that's... That's my very boring life. So. And make mega content. She'd be, she be doing all the content things on her. She has a book Instagram, a TikTok, a YouTube channel. And so, a blog. Yeah. And a blog. So I'll link all of this probably on Instagram. I'll just be sharing all the things. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, for me... Oh, I, I'm going to Hawaii. <laughs> My nephew's coming home from a church mission, um, and so he is flying from Japan where he was serving, and he's flying to Hawaii, so we're going to meet him there, and we're hopefully going to be able to spend a lot of time with him. Polynesians are very, like, um, they love to spend a lot of time together, and so when Nui comes home, I think a lot of, like, family members and friends are going to want to, like, spend time with him, so I can't hog him, so I might... Hopefully we see and spend a lot of time with him, but we also have to share him with everyone. Cause You'll just have to plan a second trip. I, exactly. <laughs> um, so I have that. And that, yeah, that's probably my main, the main thing I'm looking forward to. That'll be fun. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of my life update. Nothing really. We're actually filming this pretty far in advance um, because Chantel was in town and I was like, you need to come tell us about all the books we need to read. So it's funny. Actually, I, I told Chantel this. I was like, one of the questions is like, what book did you last read? And like, by the time this airs, she'll probably have read 30 more books. And I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> probably, actually. <laughs> so anyways, this is a little early. So I can't really get specific with what's really going on. Because when this airs, it's like old news, you know? <laughs> Okay, but yeah, that's that's it for life updates. My favorite question. What's in a Chantel Erickson starter pack? <laughs> I feel like this is the question all of you, the people you have on your podcast dislike most. Because it's hard to think about. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably say Dr. Pepper. That is one of my biggest addictions. Um, sugar of any form, that is. I think, are you the gummy girl? You love gummies. Yes. 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 So I'm going to have to put some, some fun gummies on your little starter pack post. <laughs> <laughs> like the uh, the Nerd Cluster gummies? Mm -hmm. Addictive. Love those. Um, A book, obviously. Oh, obvi. <laughs> See, you can't think of anything either. Well, the things I'm thinking of is like Chantal Erickson starter pack from like the 9 to 5 girly. <laughs> because when we worked together, I was like, okay, she never carried a purse. It was always your thread wallet, yep. like keychain. But I'm like, I don't know if I would put that in there. You, I want to say 
in your starter pack needs to be like some sort of jacket because she's always <laughs> cold always cold that is true and even in the summer she would have like a jacket like on her chair yep um so i probably put like a cute little jacket on there probably a little jean jacket or something on your starter pack because you're a cold girly like she always had she always has a jacket because she knows to be prepared that she will be cold wherever she goes <laughs> That is, yeah, valid. Yeah, okay. And then there's one more. It's got to be so specific. This is the way to do it. Just have you make my starter pack. Um, I would probably say your phone. Not because you're addicted to it, because you're not really on it as much as someone your age would be, but because you read your books off your phone, which I kind of spoiled the question. Ugh, please forget this. <laughs> And you are like a content creator. Yeah. And so your phone is so important for filming and yeah. So not because she's addicted to her phone, but because content creators like need a phone to create what you're doing. And like her life is planned out. Like she was, we were talking at, at breakfast this morning and she was like, yes, I film my content on Tuesday and Thursdays. And she like religiously sticks to it. And I'm like, dude, good for you. I'm like a wing it kind of girl. Like, oh, maybe I'll film this today. Whatever. If it does or it doesn't happen. So maybe I'll say that. Okay. That's your start. That's your starter pack. Sorry. I, I butted in. And <laughs> nope. I appreciated it. Sometimes I feel like your friends know your starter packs better than hundred percent because there's little quirks about yourself that you maybe don't recognize or don't realize and yeah. so when your other friends are like like the jacket thing i was like oh yeah that's true i always You're... have a jacket because i'm always cold even in the summertime yep <laughs> okay what is your fun drink anything with dr pepper anything with dr so to so yesterday we went to swig and you got life's a peach and it's a Dr. Pepper drink with like peach and cream and things. And today you got a heartbreaker mm -hmm. and it was Dr. Pepper with blackberry and cream. Yep. And which one is better to you? Or are they the same? You just needed a little something different today. They're both really good. They both, I really like fruity flavors. And so okay. Dr. Pepper with the fruit is always just great. So either of those two, are good. when I live around places that have soda and Italian sodas, that's mm -hmm. usually what I tend to get. Okay. Um, what celebrity would you be best friends with? I hate to be a basic girly, but I would love to be best friends with Taylor Swift. Her, she is, because I do marketing, an absolute like marketing icon, how mm -hmm. far ahead she plans out, how everything is related and all her Easter eggs. I like that is the type of person I aspire to be. And so, yeah, I would love to be best friends with her. Actually, if you weren't going to say that, I was going to bring it up and be like, I think you would because you both think, I wouldn't say overthinkers, but like you put a lot of thought into things to try and make them great. When we worked together, Chantel was always like trying to think like, how can we make, it was a good idea, but how could you even make it better and things. And I think that's very much Taylor Swift too. Um... Fun fact, actually, I feel like I liked Taylor Swift. Like, like recently I am Swifty. After the Aries tour, I'm Swifty. But Chantel, when she was like, "Hey, like Taylor Swift's coming out with a new album," so we were working together at the time when this was ha when her Midnight's was coming out, and Midnight's dropped, and I listened to it, and I was like, "Oh, it's okay." Chantel was loving it, loving it. And she was like telling me about Swifty TikTok. Like, I feel like Chantel's like a true Swifty. I grew up with her. What's yeah. actually a fun fact is Caitlin and I both came to the office and it was the day that uh, Taylor Swift's tickets started launching so for her Eros tour. <laughs> and it was funny because we're both sitting at our desks and we're both like texting other people. And I was like, guess what? I actually just got Taylor Swift tickets. And she was like, okay, so when are you going? And I'm like, August 3rd. And she's like, no way, we're going August 4th. So we were in the same location at the same time. Hers was the day after. Mm -hmm. um, and we had made plans to meet up, but it just had not worked out while we were in LA. But I, I thought that was funny because everyone on the internet was blowing up trying to get these tickets. And we we're just chilling because our friends were the ones who got it, which was very, I was very grateful for because yeah. we didn't have to deal with that nightmare. But I kept forgetting. Yes. I would be like, oh, I'm going to Taylor Swift. Like, I just forgot because it was so far in advance. 
or that airs tour changed my life. Okay, what's something on your wish list for under five hundred dollars? I guess it's my realistic wish list. I'm actually I need to get two more bookshelves because my book collection oh. has gotten so big that I am gonna make a book corner in my in my house. That's wonderful. When did you move to Denver again? Like, what month was that? I moved in May of 2023. So it hasn't been a full year yet? No. And when you moved, you had... Like, 10 books. 10 books. And now you're needing two more bookshelves. I currently own about 180. Holy, holy dude. (laughs) And she owns a Kindle. I did. I just got a Kindle for the first time last week Mm -hmm. and i again like i've read since i was a child goodreads was my first social media so this is my first time having a kindle which is so bizarre because you'd probably well as we go on this episode with the uh and we get into the topic you'll be like she just got a kindle like you're gonna be so surprised um and i was gonna say something oh and you love renting books from the that is mostly how i read yeah Yeah. is renting from the library But dude, I can't believe 180 books that is. And you only buy books that you love. Correct. That's crazy. (laughs) Okay, so two bookshelves. Love it. Oh, do you have a current hyperfixation at the moment? Like what is something like you cannot stop thinking about? Whether it was a book that you read or are you like eating the same thing over and over that you just can't get enough of? Or like you keep Googling the same thing and you're like, I just need to buy it already. Or <laughs> Not really. Like I go through phases of, of knowledge, I guess, of like, oh, this is such a cool fact. So this is very nerdy and very lame, but like <laughs> aquaponics, I am currently obsessed with okay. like learning about it. I would say that's your current hyperfixation. <laughs> that's so lame. So wait, so will you tell us a little bit about it? Aquaponics is, or hydroponics is when you build like a environment in which it like recycles itself. So like there's fish in the water and then there's plants on top and then the fish. Oh, cool. Expel oxygen that then feed the flowers or whatever plants what? are on top, which then feed the fish. I, it's just, it's so cool how like it's a closed loop. Anyway. Dude, that's actually way cool. <laughs> Her hyperfixation is like actually such a nice one to have. Like she's learning. That's so <laughs> dumb. Okay. No, I love it. Oh, okay. Current TV show. Again, I'm gonna get judged for this one. Um, my one of my guilty pleasure TV shows is Shadow Hunters. Yes, we were talking about it, and you said it was about a book series. Yes, so it's based off of a book. There was a movie made as well. The the TV series is like horrible not horrible acting but it's like so like what is it c-listed celebrities kind of acting <laughs> and so it's just very drama filled very dumb but and very teenage angst and it's just entertaining no love it and that's the thing that's like the kind of tv shows i watch so i'm like well i am embarrassing so <laughs> what would you say is like your all-time favorite tv show though like maybe a comfort show or i'd have to say probably like the Big Bang Theory. That's what we grew up watching, actually, in my family. Oh, okay. That's so cute. You were just telling me that your sister is re-watching that. And I was like, I forget how good Big Bang Theory is. Mm-hmm. So I, I, need to re- I need to watch it. I've never watched it all the way through, so maybe that's, like, something I should do. <laughs> and then, what is something that people might not know about you? I don't know. I feel like I got a few. Really? Mm-hmm. Sorry that I, like, keep taking over no, your I, No, I far more appreciate this. Things that people might not know about, Sh- about Chantel is that I feel like she gives everyone their moment. Like, if she's like, oh, you can go ahead and shine. Like, you go ahead. Like, you be the talker, whatever. But if you, if you actually are so interested in getting to know Chantel, she can yap. Like, she'll tell you about all the things, like, she loves to tell you about her family and books and things, but I think when you first meet her, you assume that she, I wouldn't say closed off, but you're not one to just spill your guts right then and there, and so I would assume people could be like, oh, like, she's not interested, or whatever, but I think if, I, 
I don't really know if I'm doing a great job of saying this, but I think she's more outgoing than people probably give her credit for. I think you just do a, I think you just let people like do their thing and you'll be like, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm just happy to like talk to you and chat with you. But if like you switch it and like let Chantel, like she'll tell you anything you want to know. I am 100% an introvert, but once I'm comfortable or with people that I like, mm-hmm. then I will become yes. an extrovert. Yes. I think, yeah. I think people, that's, that's what I would assume about you is I'm assuming people are probably thinking you're introverted and whatnot, but I'm like, no, if you, if you actually, if she feels that you actually care, I think she's willing to open up and like, yeah, every time we'd come to work, she would be ready to just chat about the night, about her family, about what show or book she's reading and Honestly, it made it really easy to, like, go to work and chat. So I would assume people, though, would be like, oh, she's introverted. She, like, doesn't want to do this or hang out or talk. But, like, I think you're always wanting to catch up and do stuff. And it's, I think people just judge you right off the bat, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's true. When it's like they don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think everyone does know that you, like, are Google. You, you could ask Chantel anything and she, even if she's not a pro at the subject, she can talk to you about it because she knows enough. <laughs> or I just BS my way really well. You are. Well, I don't, I haven't really seen you do a whole much of BSing, but I can definitely, if you say you're good at it, I'm like, yeah, I trust that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Topic time. Our topic's book talk because she is book talk. She knows all the things. So I tried to to come up with she actually gave me a bunch of good questions but I tried to come up with some so hopefully if you're not into reading but you've like maybe wanted to get into it recently we might have like a couple good recommendations for you and when I say we I mean definitely Chantel I have nothing to offer except asking these questions favorite author at the moment there's so many um Sarah Adams is fantastic if you like Hallmark type of movies, <laughs> mm-hmm. then read Sarah Adams. Um, and she's not super spicy. So no. if you don't want to like hop right into like chili peppers, she's perfect for that. Yeah, she's pretty good at... she. Her books are starting to get their toes dipped into the more spicy side of things. But she's still... She's also really good because since she was always a clean and wholesome author, that's like the genre title for it. Um, she has at the beginning of her books that are considered open door. Uh, she has the chapters that you should skip if you don't want to read those. So I think oh, that's like a great yeah. recommendation for those who want to get into the rom-coms without deep diving into the book talk side of the rom-coms. And I can, I agree. Sarah Adams is wonderful. Actually, Chantel made a, a reel in a TikTok that she actually reposted on <laughs> her <laughs> podcast and I was like or not podcast oh my gosh Instagram sorry we're just podcasting right now <laughs> um and when I saw her repost it I was like ah, that's my friend that was probably one of my highlights yeah yeah um I love her you can read her books so quickly they mm-hmm. they are like read in one night read in two days like so quick and I put at the moment because Chantel reads so much that I could never make her pick an author out of everyone so that's why I put at the moment <laughs> I would never make me do that thank you I'm okay I'm gonna we're gonna skip this one because I was gonna ask her what book gets you out of her reading slump and she's like unfortunately I've never well unfortunately not really but she doesn't really get in reading slumps because she reads so much which you'll learn as we keep going um that she's always ha- she always has a book that you're excited about you'll probably be reading a dud but at the same time, she reads multiple books at the same time. So she she, ha- she always probably has one good one. <laughs> I feel like that's a... Oh, what's it called when um, you... A cop-out. Sorry. I feel like that's slightly a cop-out to be like, I don't get reading slumps. I have books that I read and I'm like, this was dumb or I'm not liking it or I'm not feeling it. Mm-hmm. But because I read such a variety of genres constantly and I have like three or four books going at the same time... I, yeah, I don't get in reading slumps. And her, and we're, and again, I feel like I'm spoiling spoiling everything. 
her TBR list is so wild, which she'll talk about later. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll understand how like she doesn't really go through a slump. But so we're kind of skipping that question because it kind of doesn't it kind of doesn't apply. Um, but best book series in your opinion at the moment? I just finished the Prison Healer. Okay, so I just read The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni, and it's a young adult fantasy, and it was brilliant. Like, it starts with she's been imprisoned in this, like... Oh, dang. Prison, obviously. (laughs) um, Where all of, like, the worst of the criminals end up going to for multiple countries, and so she's the healer there, and... uh, there's this new guy who gets thrown in and he starts befriending her and her survival instinct is like, don't have any friends, don't have any weaknesses because it'll be used and exploited. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a rebel movement also happening at the same time in some of the outlying countries. And that rebel leader gets somehow taken to the prison as well. So she's okay. trying to heal this lady and they charge her with treason and there's this right where you can leave the prison if you pass all of these tests and the lady is so sick that the main character is like you know what i'll do it for her like i'll undergo these tests and they're all magic based and so she has to pass them but she has no magic but she has some people who help her pass them and then obviously she's kind of falling for the prisoner who came in anyway it was cute and clever and had a twist in there that i was like wait did not see that one coming i love when that happens it has a really cute story love it and then how many books are in this series do you know three it's three. a trilogy okay and it is a finished trilogy which is really nice so you don't have to like read it and then <laughs> wait for the next ones to come out they're all done okay love it i love that too when all the books are already all out oh okay a book you saw off Book Talk that was actually worth the hype. That's tricky. I think Fourth Wing is 100% worth the hype. Okay. It's about dragons. It's a romanticy. It made romanticy, as, which is romance and fantasy. Oh. That genre very popular right now. <laughs> um, it's basically like a war college for students. If you pass a bunch of challenges, you can go to this war college and then you can bond with dragons. Oh, wow. So there's dragons, there's fighting. It's a a spicy book just okay. prefacing that okay um but it's extremely popular and it was very hyped and when yes. i read it it was magic like it it oh. was fantastic that's wonderful i did see all good things about it um funny thing we actually w- went on a little book store tour yesterday together um which we both filmed she filmed content for her instagram and i filmed for youtube so you'll be able to see that once all that's uploaded it actually probably will be all uploaded by the time this um airs but we saw there's boyfriend bookmarks and the guy zayden zayden from fourth wing was made into a bookmark and i was like is he as dreamy as you think and she's like yeah he's pretty great (laughs) he is i will say if you want to read fourth wing it is going to be a five-part series and the second book just came out in november so five you said five parts five Five five-part series (laughs) whoa so if you're kind of the person who doesn't want to get into a series until it's closer to publication this one's going to be like three, four years out. So. This is going to take me five ever to read because Fourth Wing is so long. And yeah. The Iron Flame is so long. Yeah. The books are well over 500 pages. So they are, they're, they're time investments. Um, okay. So I have a few. I have rom-com, thriller, and fantasy written down because I feel like those are kind of more I probably popular. do sci-fi also is one of the Ooh, genres okay, I Okay. Let's do sci-fi too. Okay. So favorite rom-com book. At the moment. I have to keep saying at the moment because this girl reads so much. To preface, like, last year I read 200 books. The year before that I read... Well, okay, technically last year I read 199. The year before that I read 200. So I do read a lot of books. Mm -hmm. Um, My current favorite rom-com is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. Mm -hmm. The sequel to that is also fantastic. Five stars. I think The Soulmate Equation is the most perfect romance book I have ever read. She told me to read it. I read it. Can confirm. Five stars. And the sequel, can confirm. So good. I haven't finished it, but it's been so good. Uh, Favorite thriller book? So I like psychological thrillers. So I would say The Golden Couple 
by Greer Hendricks, I believe is who wrote that one. The fact that she can just whip out the author's name too is impressive. I talk about it a lot. I love it. It's, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fantasy. Okay, one I am quite obsessed with that I thought was really well written is the Caraval series, which also blends into the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. Oh, okay. It's like a circus meets magic and dreams and challenges. Oh, that wow. That one's really, like, that one was very well thought out and the world building for it is minimal which is what i prefer in my fantasy books okay but it sucks you in and tells a very compelling story oh wow that's awesome i feel like you would like it add it to the add it to my tbr list (laughs) um okay sci-fi i just read the second book in the red rising series and red rising is i think i saw you post about that yeah red rising is basically hunger games meets mythology on mars do you see why i like getting all all my recommendations from Chantel? because she does exactly this it's like hunger games me da 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 on you know and i'm just like i love it because i'm like oh yeah i am into that she does that for ev- like almost everything and it is wonderful sorry i didn't mean to cut you off no but, you're good sorry back to our sci-fi book <laughs> yeah so red rising is hunger games meets ender's game if you've ever read or watched that movie um also reminds me a lot of red queen if you've read that so basically like caste system where there's like a hierarchy based off of your blood type okay kind of your blood but like powers equal what blood faction you are so it was really well done that one i think is still being published so i'm slowly working my way through that series but okay just intriguing it sounds like it honestly um okay really quick before we move on to some of my other questions is I was going to ask you about Akatar <laughs> and, like, what's her name? Sarah J. Mass? Yes. She has been blowing up. Do you think her series are, like, worth the hype that they're getting? I feel like it's up there. Like, the hype she's getting is up there with what I've seen with Fourth Wing. Yes. So Sarah J. Mass actually, I would say, is more popular than Rebecca Yeros, who wrote the Fourth Wing series. Yeah. She probably is our modern day... Game of Thrones kind of hype. Okay. I have only read, full disclosure, one and a quarter of her books, and she has like 18 published. It's so wild. And it's very impressive, and all of her books are actually extremely long. I've heard very good things about the Akatar series, so that's A Court of Thorns and Roses. Mm-hmm. Every time I express hesitancy because I didn't like the first book, okay. everyone's like, well, you're actually not supposed to like the first book. So once you get through the first book, the rest of the series is better. Okay. But it's hard for me. Like, if I don't like the first book, I'm not going to read the rest of the books in the series. Especially when there's so many to read to see exactly. how long you have to keep going before you're like, oh, I like this. Yes. So I am going to try it again this year and try and get through the other books and see if it gets better. Okay. A lot of people have assured me it is. I hear she's worth the hype. Yeah. I guess we'll see. I only trust Chantel's <laughs> recommendation or thoughts about things, so I'm just waiting for her to tell me. It's a lot of pressure there. <laughs> um, but Chantel does say, she's like, you are a Hallmark girl. So she does text me about, actually, I did mention um, in the towards the beginning of the podcast when I started, I had finished reading Check and mate by Allie Hazelwood and she was the one she's like you're gonna love this there's a little bit of um not drama but conflict a bit and she's like but you can do it (laughs) um how many books are on your tbr list (laughs) so like I mentioned goodreads was my first social media so this has been over a decade worth of making a TBR pile. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I have over 800. However, my active list, I would say probably 100. Dang. And is that like, in your mind, you're like, oh, that's doable. Like we can get through that. Through the 800 or through the 100? Through the 100. Absolutely. Okay. Obviously, because you can get 100 done through the first half of the year. (laughs) Yeah. How many books are you typically reading or listening to at a time? Because you do love audiobooks as well. I do. And audiobooks count as listening. I mean, audiobooks count as reading. Mm -hmm. 100%. Agreed. I simultaneously probably about three. I usually have one audiobook happening. I have 
one or two like ebooks. I almost spoiled away one of your questions coming up. Um, <laughs> I've been spoiling them. <laughs> <laughs> so usually I have one that I'm listening to and then two that I'm reading. Okay. Yeah. It's, I don't know how her brain is able to do it, but yeah, when we work together, she, if she's doing mindless work, she can listen to a book or like just editing photos or whatever. She can, she'll be listening to a book. Um, but it's crazy how you can keep them straight when you're also reading them too. Part of it is I read a variety of genres, which is how I don't really get in reading slumps and I don't get tired of books because if I have a fantasy book, a self-help book and a romance book all happening at the same time, their plots are different enough True. that I can keep track of it. Actually, that kind of takes us into our next question. Tips to getting out of a reading slump. I have two. One, change up the genre. Like so often I feel like we get tired of books because you've read the same cookie cutter rom-com for like 10 books straight. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, no, you're good. Uh, for like 10 books straight. And so when you start reading the next one, you're like, I already know what's going to happen. These characters are going to like fall in love and then they're going to have a third act breakup and you're just tired of it. Mm -hmm. Change to a different genre. Usually like go to like a YA book or like a fantasy or like a completely different type of book. And even if it's not something you love after, like at least it like kind of a brain wipe mm -hmm. and that helps the other recommendation i have is read the last book that made you truly happy and for a lot of people who are getting into reading that's like going back all the way to percy jackson or harry yeah. potter <laughs> but finding what you fell in love with that kind of will reignite the spark to read something again i actually have been itching to read some of my favorite books um from childhood yeah, actually, I was telling this to Chantel. I saw a TikTok the other day about the Click series, <laughs> and that is like middle school. <laughs> it's not even like a high school young adult. That's like, anyways. And I was like, I remember loving them so much. I was reading through them like crazy. And then one in high school that I was reading was um, Pretty Little Liars. Um, and I read that before the TV show. Because the TV show came out when I was in high school, and then I actually stopped reading it, and then I never, like, really watched the show. So I was thinking about, maybe I should pick that back up. But then again, my TBR list is getting pretty long, so I'm like, I think I'm out of my reading slump, so. But I have been itching to read some of my favorites again. Okay, hardback or paperback? <laughs> <laughs> Which I already know the answer to. I... I exclusively read like ebooks. That is most like I last year of the 200 I read, 199, we're rounding up, but whatever. <laughs> of the fine, 199 books that I read, I think three of them were physical books. That's wild to me. And she's reading them off her phone and she has just like a regular iPhone. Like it's not even like the huge one, <laughs> it's like your normal size and she's reading off of it. Yeah. You want to know something slightly psychotic about me? Yeah. My audiobooks are at about 2.5. Yes. Yeah. She, you just recently listened to the Britney Spears memoir mm -hmm. and it's a six hour book, but you listened to it in like, it was one hour. I listened to it on my flight over from Denver and the six hour audiobook condenses it down to an hour long format, an hour and a half. Yeah. That's wild to me. I should try it. <laughs> I do listen to like 1.5, but I need to like amp it up. You can't just go to a 2.5. You do have to kind of speed it up. And it does depend on the narrator. If okay. I have a narrator with an accent, like a British narrator, it's dropped down to two. Like I okay. can't do 2.5. It's just really hard to translate it, I guess. Like the accent makes it a lot harder. But okay. if it's an American narrator, I'm usually at about a 2.3 to 2.5. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild. And it's crazy how you're reading so much just off your phone. Oh, that's why we put that in the starter pack. Because her being a content creator, but also reading off of her phone. So that's why I was like, we need that phone in the starter pack. Yeah. Um, uh, last book you read. <laughs> I finished one last night. It was Alina Armas's The Long Game. It's basically, I thought it was going to be a sports romance book. And I guess it is in that he is a former uh, major league soccer player, but not really sports romancy in my opinion. It, so it was it was cute. Prior to that, I read The Golden Sun, which is the second book in the Red Rising series. Oh, that's a lie. Before that, 
I guess after that, I've read the Britney Spears memoir on my way here. So mm-hmm. those are the last three books that I'd read. Wonderful. All within like the past 48 hours, 72 <laughs> hours. Yeah. That is crazy, dude. Your Goodreads is probably so great. Mine's like, has two books done for the year. <laughs> it's February. Goodreads, uh, yeah, yeah. when you read that many books, that is the only way I can keep track of the amount of books and what my thoughts were in the stars. I am pretty lucky that despite having read all these books, I can remember really random facts about them. So it's not like I read them and completely forget it. I do remember weird things about them. She does. There was a book that I read and she remembered that the upside, um, the upside of falling. Yep. And she remembered that she wore white converse and a muddy <laughs> field and that he carried her on yeah. his back. <laughs> I was like, Oh my gosh, dude. Coming from the girl who just finished reading three books and she like remembers a book she read like six months ago. It's crazy. A book that changed your life. So there's two. I would say The Choice by Edith Eager. She is a Holocaust survivor. And she also teaches like psychology, I want to say. And so her entire book is about what she learned being in um, one of the concentration camps. And how we have the choice to pick what we focus on and that can determine if we're happy or not or if we give up or if we fight that one was so cool to read and then the other one is an emily henry book actually but this is her backlist so a lot of people read emily henry um thanks to tiktok but all of her adult romance books and her adult romance books are phenomenal but i read her backlist and a million junes by emily henry it's a young adult kind of fantasy book And when you're reading it, you're like, what is going on? It's Romeo and Juliet with, like, paranormal ghosts. Oh, whoa. But it's approach to grief and loss and the other and learn. Like, it, I love that book. It is one of the best books I have ever read. I didn't know she, I only thought she had her core books, Mm -mm. Book Lovers, Beach Read. I didn't know she had a young adult. She has three young adult books prior to a romance. Million Junes is the best of those three, okay. in my opinion. Okay. I recommend it to everybody. It is the way I describe it, and once you read it, like you'll it's beautifully poignant. Like that's the definition of how I would explain it. Wow. Another book on my TBR list. That's You'll cry if you read it, Caitlin. You specifically. Yeah, but... I got a lot of tears to give. <laughs> <laughs> but I would recommend it to almost anybody. That's wonderful. I hope you guys are, have already written so many things on your TBR list listening to this. Um, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Sorry. Um, you guys should follow her Goodreads account. She, add, She's always adding to her TBR list. She's always marking the books that she's currently reading, what she's finished. And she always um, gives them a rating and writes a little synopsis. It's so wonderful. So if you're not close friends with her to get her what she's currently reading at the moment or what she's enjoyed, you can always find all that info on her Instagram and Goodreads for sure. Blog, honestly, everywhere. (laughs) But Goodreads, you should should follow. And actually, you were telling me about your blog Mm -hmm. and how you... So there's Chili Peppers and how... On your blog, you'll put books with like, okay, this book or these books will go with like one chili pepper. So can you like talk about that for a little bit? Yeah. So a lot of reasons people are kind of nervous about getting into book talk is because they are quite frankly, very spicy books. (laughs) Um, And the more you read the spicy books, the your interpretation of it kind of starts to change. And so one thing, my friend who also does uh, my book blog with me, we decided to make a book uh, spice scale. Yes. And then we put it with every single chili pepper or the zeros don't have chili pepper, but you get the point. Um, we have a book that's popular assigned to that. So that way, you know, this one has a one that, and so like when in Rome, that's a little bit more spicy, but like it's a one level. Mm-hmm. Um, so then... All the other books that we recommend who have a one chili pepper, you'll know roughly what their spice level is. As opposed to, it's very subjective when content creators are like, this is a five. And you're like, well, for you, it might be a five. But for me, that's like a 10. Yeah. So this way, at least it's, you know what you would rate one in Rome or the cheat sheet or Sarah J. Mass. And then we kind of compare the spice level that way. 
I love that. I feel like that is a true way to be able to, like, give a book a chili pepper. <laughs> we also then explain, like, what it would be if it was a movie. Like, what the rating would be or why it's oh, rated I that way and that. things like that. Yeah. That is actually more of, like, a universal mm-hmm. way to be able to rate a book. Is like, if it was a movie, that's so smart how to look at it like that. Okay. Um, our last question of our book talk um, topic is... Uh, any movie adaptations or shows that are better than the book? So controversial, but so real. Okay. Um, one off the top of my head, Where the Crawdads Sing, I actually really like the way they adapted it. I think okay. the timeline of how they told the story is better in the movie than it is in the book. Okay. Dune. We just watched that with your husband last night. The Dune movie, I think, is better than the book. Oh, good to know. I will say Dune had some really great actors and actresses yes. like they got a lot of big people and i loved where the crowd had sing i actually unfortunately didn't read the book but i really did enjoy the movie and another thing i want to bring up is i read the summer i turned pretty oh. and i really liked it um Chantel couldn't get through it because belly is so whiny she's so annoying like the books themselves <laughs> you're so right the book's she is an annoying little teenager mm-hmm. who... She seems so much younger in books, which yes. is, like, weird because these brothers are a year... Obsessed with her. ...and too older than her, and she just seems young. You're right. Mm-hmm. But Chantel just did say, she's like, yeah, the TV show doesn't suck, but the books do. <laughs> yes. The TV show is far better than the books. Partially, I think, because it's now a decade later, almost. Actually, I think it has been a decade. Yeah. Um, and so... The author's having a chance to kind of revisit them and kind of make it a little bit better and make it more make more sense. It's like Rick Riordan's um, Percy Jackson that just finished on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. He is addressing some things that sh- now a decade later he's able to kind of fix or make a little bit flow a little bit better things like that. So I love that. I love that authors are getting a chance to like be able to update their books that to go more along with nowadays. Because it is, it is funny when you read, like, an outdated book, you're like, what's it going to be like I message 20 years <laughs> from now? You know, you kind of think of that. So it is fun when they be able, when authors are able to make their books into shows and movies and be able to kind of update it. What do you think of, like, Colleen Hoover and, like, her books being made into a movie or a show? Um, so it ends with us, which is one of her popular books, and it the movie is actually going to start Blake Lively. Mm-hmm. Um, it got a lot of backlash on social media because it is a book about domestic abuse. Mm-hmm. And it kind of romanticizes that. So a lot of fans were like, do not make this into a movie. We should not be mm-hmm. green lighting this kind of concept and romanticizing it because that is not okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think It Ends With Us was one of the most impactful books I read. Okay. Um but I didn't read it as a romance book. I read it more as like a book that highlights the importance of seeing red flags in relationships mm-hmm. because of what can happen. And other than that, very I, I am not a fan of Colleen Hoover. Okay. I know. Yeah. You've never really recommended her to me. I think you're like, mm, it's just not going to be your jam, which I appreciate. So, um... I just, with her, like, I have a hard time when authors, romance in books should be used to educate any aspect of it. Like, it should be as a manual or a learning guide to those who are reading it of how to improve their own relationships. Love it. So I have a hard time when romance books are toxic or destructive or they're promoting habits that are not healthy in real life relationships because I am of the opinion that anything you read alters how you think Mm. and so if I keep reading uh, books with a lot of red flags or with characters that are very toxic I feel like people start to internalize that and base their real life relationships off of things that happen in books and if they're unhealthy books Mm -hmm. they're gonna have an unhealthy life and so I have a hard time with certain authors that yeah that have that kind of style I think that's why I tend to gravitate towards those happy, fluffy, rainbow books just because it makes me feel better after reading. Yeah, I feel like if I did read 
those kinds of books, I'd feel heavier and like more, I'd probably be more emotional. Yeah. You know, so that's why it's important for me to read like certain genres or happier books because it really affects my, my moods, I would say. Um, but dude, I am literally so grateful that you agreed to come on the podcast. I knew when starting this podcast, I would have you on at some point to just educate us all about book talk. (laughs) And you're seriously the most perfect person to do it. And so I'm so grateful you came on and I hope everyone listening enjoyed, um, listening to Chantel and that you added, added a few books to your TBR. But anyways, thank you so much for coming. I'm so grateful to know you and that you are a huge influence in my reading lately. It's the last couple of years, actually. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just grateful everyone tuned in and have a great week, guys. See ya. Thanks, guys. Bye.